，很多找工作的人，雨夜就露宿在这龙华汽车站旁边，很多人没田了，就晚上就睡在这些地方，挣点钱真的太难了。现在年轻人找工作有多难呢？每一百个年轻人里就有二十个人是找不到工作的。我身边其实有很多朋友都已经被裁掉，或者是降薪，都属于一个失业的状态。On May 16th, China's National Bureau of Statistics released economic data for April, revealing a historically high unemployment rate of 20.4 percent among young people aged 16 to 24. 完了完了，好多厂里都没事做，都跑出来打零工了，几万人在这里都找不到事做。This worrying statistic is set to worsen with an estimated 11.58 million university graduates entering the labor market this year, an increase of 820,000 from 2022, yet another historical record. As a surge of graduates enter the workforce, China's already high youth unemployment rate is expected to further escalate. Many Chinese questioned the official unemployment rate of 20.4 percent, suspecting the actual rate to be much higher. Some even estimated the true unemployment rate to be around 45 percent, attributing the underreported statistic to the voluntary self-reporting system and the neglect of rural unemployment rates. 你说，对于企业来说，年轻人又年轻又能熬夜，又有创意有想法，给的钱还少，不用开那么高的工资。你说，对于年轻人这种新生力量，企业都不愿意去用。中年人呢，超过三十五岁之后。The Wall Street Journal reported on May 16th that the 20% youth unemployment rate suggests that China's economic recovery may not be sustainable, indicating underlying uncertainties. A 27-year-old woman surnamed Yao, who quit her job as a barista last month due to a meager salary of less than 3,000 yuan, or approximately 430 U.S. dollars, revealed that her peers' unemployment rates might even exceed official statistics. About a third of her friends of similar age are currently jobless, she said, adding that she just wants to take it easy for now. Citing comments from Li Qiang, the executive vice president of Zhaopin Recruitment, the Economic Observer reported that the increasing number of university graduates over recent years, combined with unemployed graduates from previous years, will further fuel the snowball effect of job market pressure in 2023. Bloomberg's report on May 16th quoted economists as saying that new pressures from university graduates will significantly surge in July. But unemployment rates among young people who have not yet received a college education could be the main driver of the high youth unemployment rate. Over the past three years, the CCP's stringent pandemic control measures have severely impacted the Chinese economy. Additionally, the CCP's indiscriminate suppression of the internet, real estate, and education sectors. Ostensibly to make the private sector obey the party's command, has inevitably strangled the survival space of private enterprises. As these businesses struggle on the brink of collapse, it is certain that unemployment will continue to rise. The rise in unemployment rates has exacerbated young people's sense of frustration and anxiety about their career and socio-economic status, and their dissatisfaction with the government. In November of last year, a rare blank paper revolution broke out at several universities, protesting against the authorities' long-term zero-COVID policy. The students recognized that their efforts were not being rewarded with equivalent employment opportunities. And approximately 80 universities saw students participating in the protests. Their actions did indeed exert pressure on the authorities, and two months later, Xi Jinping announced the abandonment of the zero COVID control measures. Various indicators suggest that the recovery of China, the world's second largest economy, is facing difficulties. 
The data on industrial output, retail sales, and fixed investments released by the National Bureau of Statistics were significantly below expectations. Major companies like Alibaba and Tencent have barely hired new employees since 2019, and many large enterprises are continuously laying off staff. Young people have taken to social media, satirically branding themselves as the last generation. If the crisis faced by this younger generation continues to escalate and become normalized, a sudden event could trigger large-scale protests among young people, potentially creating an unstoppable wave of revolution. The Beijing authorities are well aware that the young generation harbors particular risks that could destabilize society. Xi Jinping appears to be hoping to take further measures by pushing the young to move to rural areas. In early May, Xi Jinping wrote back to a group of university students, encouraging them to embrace hardship. On May 4th, a prominent article in the People's Daily featured a warning from Xi, urging young people to prepare for hard times and to take up responsibilities. They should seek employment in rural areas to help revitalize the local economy. Those who leave cities and contribute to poverty alleviation in remote, underdeveloped areas are praiseworthy. Xi Jinping himself left Beijing at the age of 16 to live in the mountains, recalling the seven years of rural life were a good training for me. Independent Chinese writer and commentator Cai Shenkun took to Twitter, commenting, "Never has any country's president or prime minister called on young people to embrace hardship. Even during Mao's era, he would flatter the young, calling them the morning sun at eight or nine o'clock." In this era of globalization, with increasingly quick and transparent information dissemination, asking young people to embrace hardship is a disdain for the young. It's unbelievable that the party media sings praises for this and applauds it from top to bottom. Why abandon a peaceful life and insist on making young people suffer? What is the motive behind this, and where is it trying to lead the young generation? Some analysts argue that in an attempt to ensure social stability, the Communist Party intends to exile the young generation, who should represent the country's future and are educated, to rural areas. Reminiscent of the "up to the mountains and down to the countryside" campaign during the Mao era, the "up to the mountains and down to the countryside" movement began in the 1950s, developed in the mid 1960s, and ended in the late 1970s. Under the call and organization of the Chinese Communist Party, tens of millions of urban-educated youths were dispatched to support rural areas and border regions. The indeterminate relocation and the interruption of education in this movement became a nightmare for that generation. The report pointed out that the rationale of the Communist Party for the "up to the mountain and down to the countryside" campaign during Mao's era was to reduce the three major differences. However, the actual reason was not only to address the serious economic issues brought about by the Cultural Revolution, but more importantly, to remove young people from cities to consolidate the CCP regime that was on the brink of crisis. In April of this year, Guangdong Province drew public attention after introducing a policy calling on 300,000 unemployed young people to find work in rural areas for a period of two to three years. Guangdong is one of the most economically active provinces in China, with top-tier cities like Guangzhou and Shenzhen, and rapidly growing cities like Foshan and Dongguan. It used to be the province creating the most job opportunities. However, the move to send 300,000 young people to rural areas indicates the severe situation of youth unemployment in China. Some experts believe the true purpose of this mobilization plan is to temporarily relocate young people to rural areas, offsetting the peak unemployment in cities and avoiding the unseemly scenario of fierce job competition. By dispersing the unemployed, it prevents a situation where unemployed youths could easily mobilize and take on the streets, triggering a new round of blank paper revolution. Currently, the desire of Chinese people to invigorate the economy, earn money, and provide for their livelihood is growing day by day. However, compared to youth unemployment, middle-aged unemployment is even more daunting. 
For those over the age of 35 and trying to enter a company, there is almost no interest, and no one wants them even for basic factory work. Middle aged people are in a very awkward situation. Even those who have been laid off from large companies, even those with technical skills, have to opt for cheaper, low end job markets. They also face pressures such as housing and car loans. For someone with a family, middle aged unemployment is indeed a heavy blow. Moreover, cases of job downgrading are also common, such as software developers from major firms becoming food delivery drivers, or department heads turning into ride hailing drivers. Former high achievers who used to earn hundreds of thousands or more annually can suddenly fall into the low income category. This significant drop is difficult to accept. Using the food delivery services Meituan and Ulama as examples, a vast number of undergraduate, master, or even doctorate degree holders have joined the ranks of delivery workers. On April 14th, an article titled Overcrowded Delivery Riders Can No Longer Rely on This Last Resort Job was published by Chinese media Jiamian News, which set off a wave of online discussions. Propelling related topics to the top of the trending list. According to some data, up to 30% of delivery workers hold undergraduate degrees. Not only food delivery and ride hailing services like Didi, but even security and cleaning positions are now also saturated. It used to be said that if you can't find a job, you could always deliver food as a last resort, but it appears that even this route is no longer viable. The speed of China's economic slowdown continues to exceed the predictions of both the CCP and economists. The rampant corruption among officials s h o w no signs of abating, and the wealth gap is increasingly severe. These factors will inevitably lead to social unrest. A resident of Shanghai, Mr. Wang, once stated the crime rate has noticeably increased compared to times of economic growth. Leading to political instability. When young people are driven to despair, they can do anything out of fearlessness, and that's what scares the authorities. They encourage the young to metaphorically go up to the mountains and down to the countryside, to the rural areas, because the cities cannot accommodate their employment. Ordinary people are being driven to desperation, resulting in political instability. Li Zhuang, a former mainland lawyer, stated, The higher the unemployment rate, the higher the crime rate. There's no doubt that the crime rate is on a linear increase. In the 10 years since Xi Jinping came to power, he has brought China to the brink of collapse through large scale financial aid, massive infrastructure projects, and the encroachment of the state sector into the economy. Significantly diminishing the nation's wealth accumulated during the reform and the opening up period. Especially during the three years of the pandemic, the CCP will pay a heavy economic and social cost for its ever intensifying oppressive policies, causing massive unemployment and thoroughly crushing the people's capacity and confidence for consumption and investment. Xi Jinping's regime faces an unprecedented governance crisis. He, who was dubbed the CCP's chief accelerator, implying that his governance errors will accelerate the collapse of the CCP and the breakdown of Chinese society, is said by many to have already driven his brakeless vehicle over the top of the mountain and is now hurtling downhill, enveloped by plumes of smoke, racing swiftly towards an end marked by demise.